Keith Tebow from FRC Media, thank you for joining us today. There's a lot of activity, as always, at Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. And it's been a while since we checked in on what's happening over there on Stonehaven Road. We're going to do that right now with the Assistant Superintendent and uh, Principal, Andrew Rebello. Andrew, thank you for joining me. How are you today? I'm doing well, Keith. Thanks for having me. Hope all is well. It is. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, a lot of talk has been uh, around for quite a while now about a new physical Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School on Stonehaven Road. Give us an update on the progress of the project. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, we're, we're very excited, right? So we've gone through the process of designing, uh, you know, a building, a space, identifying a space. We absolutely, And we actually submitted that to the state on October 28th. And tomorrow, the MSBA is meeting. We are hoping they will review our design that we have sent. Uh, and if all goes as planned, uh, hopefully they will um, approve our plan, and give us a reimbursement number that we'll bring back to the towns that will vote in the spring. Um, so the initial numbers, they seem like they're going to be very high, one of the highest around as far as reimbursement goes for brand new buildings. Uh, but we don't have a confirmed number yet. We will see tomorrow. Uh, and like we have every step of the way, we will undoubtedly keep updating our community uh, with with every decision uh, and every number that comes as, again, we're, we're, we trust the intellect of the voter um, and we undoubtedly uh, are building uh, a space here that is fiscally responsible every step of the way. So we'll see how it goes with the MSBA tomorrow. Um, and uh, if all goes as planned, we'll get a reimbursement number. We'll have approval, which we'll bring to the towns in the spring. And additionally, I think we've unequivocally proven uh, the world class education that you get here at Diamond. You know, whether it's the uh, U.S. News and World Report being rated as one of the best high schools in the nation or whether you're walking into your local auto body or dentist, more often than not, it's, an, it's a diamond student. And we've talked a lot about or, or people have talked a lot about growing our community. Uh, if we want better communities, we need to invest in the schools. Uh, and this is really an investment to the next generation. Uh, of this community, quite frankly. So we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Um, with this, the, Our current space was built in the 1960s for a 20th century workforce. Imagine what we could do with a 21st century building supplying the next generation workforce and continuing to produce life-ready graduates from Diamond. That's really our plan. So we're very excited. We're looking forward to the MSBA meeting tomorrow. You know, a lot has been made um, as, uh, you know, local communities. Of course, here in Fall River, we have a new BMC Durfee High School that taxpayers um, uh, approved a debt exclusion on. You've got new high schools in Westport and and Somerset, uh, if you will, not as not as new as as Durfee and, and Westport. Um, I guess, you know, in terms of approaching these uh, communities, um, how are you going to try to sell that? Hey, it's time for, for Diamond to, to, to get to this point as well and have a new facility that will be beneficial to its students? Sure, that's a great question, uh, Keith, and it's on our radar too. Um, I, I think that we're, we continue to be transparent every step of the way, but unequivocally, the time is now, right? We've proven the world-class education uh, that you get here at Diamond, and it's been seen and reflected in, in the demand for students to come to Diamond. You have a brand new Durfee, you have a brand new uh, Westport High School and relatively new Somerset. This November, this past November, Right, applications are open for freshmen from uh, September through next summer. We already had over 500 applications a month ago to come to this school, and that's usually the demand we're seeing. It's higher than the demand we've ever seen uh, at this time. Every year we have 375 freshman spots, usually around 700 applications. We're set to blow that number out of the water, and that's just a reflection of the education. Uh, and the growth opportunities that transform the next generation, which we've proven over time. So I think if we continue to be uh, transparent with this community, again, we, we trust the intellect of the voter. We trust that people understand that if we want to grow our community and want a more successful uh, community, we have to invest in schools. And I think our time is now. Um, I think that we are anticipating a, a awesome number from the state as far as reimbursement. And then it's divvied up by town based on our regional agreement. And uh, again, we're going to be fiscally responsible every step of the way because we know uh, each voter and each family what they're already investing in local schools. Uh, but the time is now. Like I said, we have a 20th century building. Imagine what we could do with a 21st century space uh, to undoubtedly produce uh, the next generation workforce 
that is going to uh, drive the economic growth in this community. So we're excited for it. And again, we're going to be transparent every step of the way and, and, and certainly inform our community. All right, let's talk about what's currently happening at Diamond. Um, you know, uh, this September, of course, everyone was back uh, full bore, uh, full in-person uh, classes. However, I know there have been some obstacles with schools across the country in terms of still seeing some cases of COVID-19 and its impact in uh, the educating of, of students. Uh, what has been happening there at Diamond and how has uh, Diamond dealt with those challenges uh, thus far this academic year? Thank you, Keith. Yeah, it's an important question. The effects of COVID-19 are undoubtedly real. And, and I think I speak for the educators and staff here as well as locally, nationally, and, and the nation. Um, a lot of talk last year about being, last year was the most difficult year in education, right? Trying to uh, create lessons that are virtual as well as teaching in person at the same time, right? This year, in many respects, is even more difficult. You have students miss, missing uh, uh, time due to COVID. You have staff missing time due to COVID, trying to catch stu students up and addressing the learning gaps the summer slide, the COVID-19 effect, that is real. We're trying to catch up students academically and vocationally, um, as well as picking up, um, you know, teachers filling in wherever they can because we have been hit by COVID, right? Teachers and, uh, teachers and staff have had to miss time uh, due to COVID. So in those respects, we have teachers teaching their workload, filling in for other teachers, you know, and in, in, in teaching their co course load, as well as preparing for their own lessons. So uh, the effects are real. Um, and, it, and it's unfortunate, but I think Diamond has one of the best staffs uh, in the nation as far as willingness to step up wherever it is and understanding that student achievement and growth is number one and uh, they'll do whatever it takes. Doesn't make it easy uh, and it certainly makes it difficult, um, but they're willing to do uh, whatever it takes and they've shown that. Um, and then on the student end, of course, you know, addressing some of those learning gaps and uh, providing uh, the initiatives to help them catch up is on our radar that we continue to do. And then partnering with families too and being transparent and providing the resources to not only grow the family, but grow the student uh, and meet every need, literally doing whatever it takes to meet those needs. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you about that. If you can expand upon it a little bit, you know, we've spoken uh, before classes started in the fall about the, um, the um, education gaps that many students have faced uh, when they were remote and then those that came back hybrid um, in, right. in the past year. Um, has there been any progress in that in making up those gaps or have has there been primarily just a stalemate because you're still dealing with, you know, students being out, stu uh, sure. teachers being out, staff being out? I guess talk about how that has evolved and and how you hope to, to get these students to, to be able to catch up. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's ongoing and it, and it requires continuous reflection, continuous retooling uh, and continuous safety nets um, all over, you know, d no matter if it's vocational or academic and providing safety nets for students that do have to be out um, because of COVID or any other long term illness or medical reason. Um, we've we've had a ton of initiatives. We've implemented uh, something called a transition counselor, a position called a transition counselor that is working with just students that were completely remote last year, right? Some some families chose to keep their home, their students completely remote. Those kids will require additional supports as they return to uh, an environment that frankly has 1,400 kids and catching them up on any work that's needed. We've implemented one-on-one -on -one tutoring, right? Identifying those high priority areas, having checkpoints along the way to make sure that students are not falling behind. And if they are, meeting with those students, providing individualized report uh, supports, getting parents involved uh, in that wraparound and uh, acceleration and going forward with it. So I think that um, involving families, identifying kids uh, before they bubble up and it's too late, and providing those academic and vocational supports uh, to help accelerate their learning has been uh, uh, at the forefront this year. That combined with our efforts to uh, address the social and emotional needs that students are coming back with. We've undoubtedly seen more hospitalizations. We've seen more need uh, for counseling. Uh, and we've undoubtedly put um, more counselors, more supports, more curriculum to address those needs because it runs simultaneous with academic and vocational acceleration. So those two um, factors we've undoubtedly focused on. We've had initiatives to address them uh, and, and really prepared uh, families as well to be supports in them. So I think this year more than ever, it is on our radar, but it doesn't stop, 
right? It's not it's not a uh, it's not a, a technical one time and done. It is a fluid process uh, because this is going to be a year effect, two year effect, three year effect that we need to have an eye on academic and vocational acceleration and social emotional supports. Because again, we will not leave any kid behind. We will do literally whatever it takes to get them there, even though it's more difficult and this year more than ever. Uh, but it is on our radar and we will not waver from that commitment. Finally, let me just ask you, you know, if we talked about the students and, and the staff there, um, how responsive have parents been and how uh, helpful have they been to, you know, continue to get communications from 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 the school and, and try to do their part in making sure that their individual student succeeds? Sure. I think parents have been great. We're actually rolling out something called our our Diamond Family Connection. Uh, that hopes to inform uh, parents every step of the way and provide clear and concise communication between Diamond and the family at home. You know, I think every week I have a weekly preparation email that highlights you need to get in touch with someone. This is where to do it. Uh, this is how to contact them. This is their email. This is their number. Um, and that hasn't stopped. That's something we developed over COVID and it will never stop is, is really, really targeting uh, families and providing supports for them to ensure that not only they're okay as a family, uh, but their child is is improving and succeeding. So uh, it is on our radar and parents have been great. Students have been great. Doesn't make it easy. Doesn't make the challenges not real, uh, but we are doing uh, whatever it takes to connect with those families. And we'll continue to do that. All right, and Andrew All right. Rebello, the Assistant Superintendent Principal at Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. As always, thank you for the update and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. I appreciate it. Great, Keith. Thank you. Have a happy holiday and Merry Christmas. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here at FRC Media. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great day.